happen. Okay, do you want nitrous? Yes! How much power can you get from nitrous on a carbureted junkyard 5.3 liter? What happens when the tune isn't spot on when you're trying to add 500 horsepower where the nitrous happened? What about turbos? Can you add nitrous to a turbo? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Older, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today, once again, we're asking, what's it worth? And we're focusing on nitrous. That's right, how much power can I add with nitrous? Well, we have three cool tests. One, a carbureted junkyard 5.3 liter, where we add a bunch of nitrous. Then we have the Big Bang 5.3, where we try to find how much nitrous we actually can add to a stock bottom end 5.3 with disastrous results. And then we added nitrous to a turbo. All good stuff. Let's check it out. Don't blame the tune. You need a cam. You'll find the best deals on LS Performance at richardholderperformance.com. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and find out what's it worth. Nitrous. So we're going to start off with a fairly simple one. This is a carbureted 5.3 liter. This is just a Wrecking Yard LM7 motor. We'll go ahead and take a look at the specs on our test motor that we ran a bunch of nitrous on. 5.3 liter LM7, stock short block, stock head, 706 head. We did have a spring upgrade because we were to put a camshaft in it. In this case, we put a comp 54-454-11 uh, cam. It was a 613-623 lift, 227-243 degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. On this carbureted combination, we ran a Holly single plane intake manifold and a 650 HP carburetor. We also ran Hooker engine 7 8 headers with an MSD ignition controller on so that we could put in the timing curve that we wanted and obviously for fuel we did the jetting on the carburetor and what we did was run this thing naturally aspirated and then we ran it with a zex plate nitrous setup and this was actually a competition that i did with one of the guys from street outlaws we ran two motors and we were both trying to figure out who could make the most power with one given nitrous setup and so we did some cool stuff but we ran this thing carbureted and optimized the air fuel and timing on it, made 454 horsepower and 396 foot-pounds of torque. Did good, you know, nice little cammed carbureted small block. And here's what happened when we did our first nitrous on it. So on this nitrous setup, what we did was add a, a nitrous setup for the plate system. It was a, a, a Zex perimeter plate setup, and we put 46 nitrous jets and or a 46 nitrous jet and a 40 fuel jet in it and equipped with this shot of nitrous it produced a peak of 591 horsepower and 522 foot pounds of torque so you can see it did it did really well but we didn't stop there because since we were trying to find out who could make the most power with nitrous <laughs> we stepped up in nitrous jet and made even more power so on this next run we made 695 horsepower and 598 foot-pounds. And you can see we're activating the nitrous late in the RPM range because we're just trying to get a peak number. Normally what guys would do is act activate the nitrous much earlier. And what that would do is it's not going to change the peak horsepower much, but would change the amount of torque that you make and for how long you're doing it. So obviously the thing would accelerate much better if you activate the nitrous earlier. But we were just trying to get a big, big peak number on this. And we ran that this, it made 695 horsepower with a 78 nitrous jet. And in this case, we ran a 64 fuel jet. Then we upped our, because this thing was a little bit on the rich side, what we did was we just stepped up in our nitrous jet to an 83 nitrous jet, and we retained the 64 fuel jet, made 708 horsepower, but we're like, you know what, we really need to change this thing and make some, you know, let's, let's make some serious power. Let's see what's going on. So we added a hundred nitrous jet and we even tried taking the jet out completely. And basically what we were, we were at the flow limit of either the nitrous plate itself or the, or the nitrous solenoid. And so with a hundred jet, we stuck a 72 fuel jet in it. It made 738 horsepower and 610 foot pounds of torque. And on our final run here, we made 750 horsepower. What we did was add some timing, <laughs> add some timing to it by mistake, but it made 753 horsepower and 637 foot pounds of torque. Now let's find out what happens when we did the Big Bang nitrous. Okay, let's jump right into our next nitrous combo. And this was actually the Big Bang 5.3 liter. What I was trying to do is find out how much power we could make before we blew something up. And unfortunately, this didn't work out as well 
well as I had hoped. <laughs> That was my fault, and <laughs> we'll get into that. But we started out with a 5.3 liter. This was an LM7, again, from the Wrecking Yard, an, an iron block, aluminum-headed 5.3 liter. It had a uh, stock bottom end on it, stock block, crank rods, pistons. We did put uh, a bunch of ring gap in it, thirty more than 30 thousandths ring gap, because we were going to run a whole bunch of nitrous on it. We topped it with a set of TrickFlow 220 ASCAST heads. We had ARP head studs on it. We put a Holly high ram intake manifold and dual 4150 throttle bodies. We put a BTR stage 4 LS3 camshaft in it. That camshaft was a 618 596 lift, 233, 250 at 50 and 113 plus 3. And we ran this thing first NA to find out how much power it would make. And then what would happen, obviously, as we added more nitrous to it. And what we wanted to do is start out with the thing making a lot of power to begin with so that we were trying to reach like the 1,000 horsepower level with nitrous to see if we could do that on a stock bottom end. So we ran this thing first naturally aspirated, and it did very well. It made over 500 horsepower. It made 502 or 503 horsepower, and peak torque checked in at 409 foot-pounds of torque. So we're starting out with a fairly you know powerful combination. Here's what happened when we added our first nitrous setup. And what we had is Holly supplied our nitrous kit for us, and it had two, basically, two sets of crossbars in it. This allows us to run two stages of nitrous. And so we could put different jetting in it, and then what we could do is combine the two jetting and, and run that together. And so we would basically have our third stage, so we could run a small stage or then a slightly bigger stage, and then both of them. And then on our combination, since we had two of these plate setups, we had a lot of potential nitrous. And what we did was we first ran it with 46 nitrous jets. But we were running two of them, so we got obviously even bigger power gain. So running the small nitrous, the stage one <laughs> nitrous kit, we pushed power up to 665 horsepower, and peak torque on the spike was 742 foot-pounds. So then what we did was we turned off stage this, this stage one, and then we added our stage two, and our stage two was equipped with 67 nitrous jets, and that pushed peak power up to... 800 and well the peak here was 882 horsepower but 850 or so was was kind of a more normal range and then what we would try to do after that was we would try to run it with both stages and that's when this happened <laughs> you can see the problem was the thing went initially lean and I just stayed into it and so we blew the motor up. <clears throat> but that had nothing to do with the nitrous not being able to do it with the right air fuel and the right timing and having the thing not be, you know, lean on the initial hit. This thing would have worked out. We could have made a lot more power. I'm pretty sure we could have gotten to the 1,000 horsepower mark with the nitrous on this 5.3 liter. But when you don't do it correctly, this is what happens. Now let's find out what happens when we do it with a turbo. Okay, guys, for a final test, we're going to add a turbo to the mix. That's right. We're going to combine two power adders. We're going to add boost for the turbo and nitrous. I'll show you what happens. When we were really trying to run nitrous as the intercooler for a turbo combination, and spoiler alert, we're just going to take a look at what the nitrous did for power because... As an intercooler, the nitrous really doesn't work very well. You can't add very much nitrous, even though it's very, very cold, in relation to how much hot air you're putting in from the turbo. So it really doesn't change the charge temperature that much. It does, however, add a whole bunch of power. So our combination was a 6-liter LY6. We had a set of TrickFlow 225 heads on it. We had a BTR. It actually was a Stage 2 turbo cam. We had a Dorman LS6 intake manifold. We ran this thing NA with Hooker inch and 7 eighths headers and obviously with the Holly HP management system. And what we did was, you know, optimize the air fuel and timing on our 6 liter, ran an NA first. And this thing made like 515 horsepower and 465 foot pounds of torque. So we had a good starting point for our combination. And here's what happened when we added our turbo. So you could see this was at about seven and a half pounds. And our turbo, our turbo kit consisted of a the stock truck manifolds feeding our normal kind of three two and a half inch Y pipe. We had two Turbo Smart 45 millimeter hyper gates on it to control the boost. We had a single Borg Warner S475 turbo. We had no intercooler and we had seven PSI springs on our wastegates. We had no controller hooked up to this though. It, we were just relying on 
the wastegate reference lines from the intake manifold over to the wastegates. And run this thing produced a peak of about 7.4 pounds of boost. And run in that manner, our combination produced 723 horsepower and 641 foot-pounds of torque. You could see nice gains kind of all the way through the curve. Here's what happened when we hit it with our nitrous. Big change in power. You can see where we activated the nitrous above. We, we hit it at about 5,000 RPM. And our turbo setup, the power output jumped from 723 with our seven pounds of boost. And we didn't make any changes to the wastegate to 907 horsepower. And this was with a 52 nitrous jet and a 28 fuel jet. Now, it's also important to note that when we did hit the nitrous, obviously we got a big change in power. We're talking about almost a 200 horsepower gain. But there was a change in boost, <laughs> and that's because maybe the wastegates didn't respond quick enough for this to happen. Maybe because we had a lot more exhaust energy going into the setup, but we should have had enough from our wastegates. But the peak boost registered during the run 10.6, but it dropped back down to about 9.4. So obviously some of this power gain the resulting power gain from adding this nitrous, which would normally be a 100 to 150 horsepower shot, let's say. Some of the power gain that we got was obviously from the increase in boost pressure. But bear this in mind, when you're running nitrous on it, if you don't have a good wastegate control, or if you don't have a controller on here to make sure that it stays at whatever your desired boost level is, when you hit the nitrous, there's a good chance that you could also add more boost. And for those that are interested, making over 900 horsepower, horsepower on this combination. We turned this thing up to about 12 pounds, I think, which is where we were kind of at the 900 horsepower range. So you can see how much the nitrous helped added, you know, is the equivalent of a whole bunch more boost. Our much older, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and know that if you want to add power, nitrous works.